Today we're going to be talking about the science of exercise and why a busy schedule does not have to sabotage your fitness hopes and dreams. In short, today we'll be talking about the information people need to make their fitness dreams come true, whether you want to be a champion bodybuilder or would just like to look and feel better. An exercise program does not have to be a hit or miss proposition. Results can be achieved efficiently and predictably if you train correctly. And that's what we'll be talking about today. First of all, with a properly supervised weight training program, the exercise stress must be intense. The key concept is intense. It must be intense enough to cause a physical response. Then secondarily, the training stress must be cautiously regulated in terms of its volume or amount, as well as the frequency, so the trainee doesn't literally overdose on it which is the worst mistake he could possibly make, as overdosing on the exercise stress, better known as overtraining, is precisely that which militates against your achieving the desired result. And that's my job as your trainer, to make sure that you're getting the appropriate training stress in just the right amounts. Not only does one not have to train every day, he must not as sufficient rest, usually at least several days, is absolutely required to allow the body to recover and to respond to the exercise. If he trains again before the recovery and response process is completed, he'll short-circuit it and go into what is essentially ODing on the exercise stress, or as I said before, overtraining. In order to be productive, exercise must, number one, be intense enough to elicit a physical response, Number two, brief enough so that one does not overtrain. And number three, infrequent enough so that the body has sufficient time between workouts to fully recover and respond to the exercise stress. My clients' workouts range from once every four days for 15 or 20 minutes to once a week for 10 to 15 minutes, depending upon their genetic makeup and their existing physical condition as well as their goals. For decades, this entire field has been misguided, primarily by the fitness magazines, which are put out not by exercise scientists, but entrepreneurs trying to sell gym equipment and supplements, which is okay, but they were never fully informed on the subject of the science of exercise. It's only here recently over the last few years that more and more practical information from the world of exercise science has finally filtered down to where it can be really useful, and that's into the fitness publication. I'm sure there are a number of people out there who would like to learn something more about the actual technical aspect of exercise science. However, we can't get too complex here. The science of exercise begins by understanding that it flows from the science of stress physiology. When the human body's status quo is threatened, in order to protect itself, the body adapts in some form. With regard to sunlight stress, for instance, the body protects itself by adaptation in the form of a suntan buildup. With exercise stress, the body protects itself through adaptation in the form of a size and strength increase. It is through adaptation, through the development of a suntan or the development of muscles beyond normal levels, that future exposures to the same stress are less threatening to the physiology, less likely to damage or destroy the organism. Nature absolutely requires, fundamentally, as a first cause, that one impose an intense training stress to affect the development of stronger, larger muscles. And because intense stress is very demanding on the body's limited reserve of resources, the individual must be cautious, even hyper-cautious, with regards to this issue of precisely regulating the imposition of the training stress in terms of volume and frequency. Intensity properly defined refers to the percentage of possible momentary muscular effort the individual is exerting, and it is up to the individual to determine how much intensity he is willing or able to generate. I would not take a an absolute beginner and train him to a point of momentary muscular failure where he's exerting, in fact, 100% intensity of effort. That can be frightening to individuals who are not accustomed to rigorous physical activity. Over a period of time, 
through a learning process, I would teach him that exerting himself at higher levels of intensity is not threatening so long as he adheres to proper exercise performance and is not limiting his exercise to weights that are so heavy he can only perform one to five reps to failure, as we refer to it. Exercise truly is a science. It's not just a casual endeavor that one could hope to succeed with without the requisite knowledge. And also very important here, a lot of people forget this, very important are the issues of accountability and motivation. With an exercise trainer, you're more likely to show up for workouts on a regular basis if you pay the guy. And having a trainer, you can be assured that he'll motivate you because he wants you to be a success and remain a client in the future. Keep in mind, listening audience, that the science of exercise flows from an understanding of the principles of human physiology. You're a human being, whether you're 20 years old or in your 40s as I am or in your 50s or 60s. The basic principles apply to everyone with variations made in terms of application of principle according to, yes, the individual's age, existing physical condition, his nutritive equilibrium, and what his or her goals might happen to be. If the 40 or 50 or 60-year-old or 70-year-old individual does not do something in terms of imposing exercise stresses on his or her body, the body will decompensate, lose lean muscle tissue, the metabolism will slow down, the individual will gain weight inevitably. And then, of course, there's the issue of cardiovascular fitness. A complete lack of exercise for individuals in this age category almost inevitably leads to cardiovascular problems. Uh, I'm sure most of those in the listening audience know of individuals who have taken care of themselves in terms of adhering to a fitness program throughout life who in their 40s, 50s, and 60s look much better than their contemporaries who never did any exercise or did anything to maintain a proper nutritional program. They can actually create or build new muscle mass or regain muscle mass they had lost. What we're aiming to do is increase the individual's total fitness, which is comprised of several components, including increased skeletal muscle strength, the maintenance and development of lean muscle mass, improved flexibility, enhanced cardiovascular function, and a more positive self-image. What more can you ask for?